Okay, so thanks very much to Geekworm for sending me two red Raspberry Pis. Now these are the ones that are made in China for the Chinese market, so you don't see them in the UK and anywhere else really. Uh, I also have this blue limited edition one, which is really rare. But uh, I'm going to concentrate on these because I've already done a video on the blue Raspberry Pi. So first of all, the Model B, which you can see here. I'm currently installing a graphical user interface on this model. I was going to try and do everything I wanted to do without installing a graphical user interface um, because obviously it doesn't work great on a Raspberry Pi Model B. Uh, good for retro gaming, but if you're going to run an operating system, it's not really recommended. So I've hooked up a camera and I just wanted to play around with terminal but the one thing I've been trying to do I couldn't manage to do so we'll have a look at that when this finishes updating and hopefully it will work. Now I first found out about the different color Raspberry Pis and different ones in different regions uh, when I'd seen this image on I think it was just searching Google Images and you can see there's a B plus on the Chinese market and this image also has the blue one that I've got the limited edition to 1000 and it's got the Model B Rev 2 uh, which I've got, but obviously I've got the other one as well, which is the Model A, which I haven't seen anywhere else listed. There is also one that's not listed on here, which I've tried to get hold of. They used to have these on Amazon UK. Uh, the picture was this, and I'm not sure if they actually had these, um, but there's a thread on it. Uh, so these were manufactured for the Brazilian market, and in the comments someone has said that everything is green now, so there's only green models that they do. If we go to this story from Raspberry Pi News, so this was uh, 19th of November 2014 and it talks about the image and goes through each individual model and at the time they were still looking for a red Chinese B plus and they said I wonder if there'll be a red A plus at some point too. So this was when the red pie was announced uh, officially so 1st of February 2013. Sad news for collectors unless you're in China you won't be able to get your hands on one of these. We've been working on how to improve availability on the Raspberry Pi in China. China represents a massive potential market for the Pi, and one which comes with its own unique set of challenges. With this in mind, in partnership with our licensees RS Components and Premier Farnell, we have granted Egoman Technology Corp a license to produce and distribute Pis in China and Taiwan. So the red Pis are easy to distinguish because they don't have the FCC and CE marks. Although it says they are fully compatible with the boards you can buy elsewhere. Ego Man are aiming to make these pies widely available in China, Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan. And there's a close-up picture in here as well. And you can see on the post here, uh, the red pie will be on sale late February. Price is 278 Chinese Yuan. But it looks like at the time you could get a green pie in China cheaper, including shipping from RS. But I guess it's about shipping times and also numbers. It looks like they were working on getting the prices lower. Okay, so that's all updated. So let's let's try reboot first of all and see what happens. I'm not sure if it'll reboot with the graphical user interface or not, but I actually don't want it to. Okay, so let's log in. Okay, so it's still on terminal, even though I've installed XFCE, that's what I want. But this video is more about the red pie, not this one. So let's shut this down with sudo shutdown dash H now. Didn't look like it was going to work then. And I need to switch these two over. So let's switch that mains off and wait for the power to go off. Uh, this is the red one, which as you can see has a couple of heat sinks already fitted, but looks in really nice condition. Uh, also came with a case as well. I'll show that later on. And the made in China bit at the top there. So let's unplug all this. I use one of these uh, little micro USB to USB-C adapters so I can still see the wattage it's using. Uh, so full size SD card, although I am using micro SD cards in there. So ah, at the time this was made in China as well. So later on they started making them in Wales. Although it doesn't say on a Raspberry Pi 02W, but it does say it on this Raspberry Pi 4 made in the UK in pen code in Wales. So let's pop all this in, because I haven't tried this yet. And also they said, uh, when I'd asked them about it, they, they said, are you worried about it, if it's working or not? And I said, it didn't really matter. Uh, I just wanted one for my collection. So this may not work. Okay, that's clipped in place. Ethernet. Let's pop my camera back up here. Let's get it a bit higher so I don't get the box in. And boot up. Okay, we have lights. 
and the display's come on, that's a good start. Let's switch over to screen capture. Okay, so I've just logged in. So let's run NeoFetch just to show what it reports. So Raspberry Pi Model B Rev2 and it's running currently at 700 megahertz. It's showing 366 megabytes of memory. So I guess it's a 512 because uh, that's more than 256. And if I go into sudo raspi-config, we've got something a little bit cool that you can do on older Pis. So if we go to performance and overclock and ignore the warning, uh, we can overclock. So let's go in the middle, let's go 900 megahertz, which is gonna need a two overvolt, but it's currently using 1.8 watts of power. So I'm not worried about that. And hit okay and finish. And then that'll wanna reboot. which it always seems like it's not gonna do it on the older pies because it takes so long, there you go. Let's see if HTOP works. Yeah, so this gives me a lot of information and you can customize this. So if I do uh, F2 for setup, so if I go to display options and scroll and go down to show the temperature, uh, show CPU temperature, and let's go with CPU frequency. So that will come up with, uh, oh, it's 700 at the moment, but I guess it's uh, gonna ramp up if it starts to work harder. And let's do F10 to store that, and F10 to quit. And let's try NeoFetch. And that shows that we are clocked at 900. So let's take a photo with the camera that I've got connected. There you go. Now what I've been trying to do and really struggling to do was to get it to show that photo. Now I installed various different programs and uh, FEH was one of them, which is talks about being able to show a photo in terminal, but I haven't loaded up a graphical user interface. So if I hit it, you can see it can't open X display. And uh, so I ended up installing XFCE as a desktop environment, um, but I'm not booted into that. Uh, but that still didn't seem to work. When I hadn't booted into a, a, an operating system with a desktop, uh, it still didn't work. But if I type in FBI, which is something else I installed, it does actually load the image, even though the operating system isn't running. And you can see I can move around that image. Uh, I mean, there's loads of different commands you can use to this. So you would be able to have it that it would come full screen and various different things, I'm sure. Um, but I was just doing this out of intrigue, really, because I've now got a system which I can remotely access, uh, which is running, well, if I didn't overclock it, it would be running 1.8 watts. Uh, it's currently running between 1.8 and 2.1. Uh, so I could leave it on any time I wanted. I could remotely access it, take a picture, and view that picture. Uh, and I just thought that was something interesting to try doing uh, with this very old device. And I quite like the way I can move around. It's quite, to be fair, you know, it's a super old device, but it's pretty snappy as long as you're not using uh, a desktop environment. So if I press escape, that takes us back out of that. Uh, so say for instance, I took another picture. So let's take a picture with my iPad in, uh, which is this one here. There you go. So that one now overwrite that image. I could do it as another image just by adding say a one or a two here. Um, but if we just try showing that image, we can see that it shows my iPad. Very cool. So let's escape out of that. Uh, and let's show you that it's, it is running a desktop environment, although it's obviously going to be incredibly slow. So we do start X and it will start launching Debian. And here it is, as would be said in my local dialect. So if we call up a terminal, uh, just to show you how it happens in real time, uh, nothing is seeming to happen. It really does run this very slow. Obviously I could lower the resolution. Um, I could do all sorts of things to try and speed it up, but I'm not really gonna run uh, a desktop environment on this. So I can use FBI to run that image. So FBI doesn't work on that. Does FEH work on that? Yeah, FEH works, <laughs> that's so weird. Uh, and, oh, it doesn't let me, oh, at least I've got mouse control, so I can move it around. 
Right, let's shut this down because yeah, I'm not going to bother um, showing it running XFCE. It's, it's far too slow to be usable. So here's all three models shown together and I didn't really cover the Model A. I will cover that in a separate video because I want to play a bit of RetroPie on it. But uh, yeah, really pleased. Big thanks to Cindy at Geekworm for sourcing this. Uh, she did try for a while, couldn't manage to find any anywhere. And then all of a sudden she managed to find two separate ones. Uh, and this one also came with this case as well. And I also have another Geekworm product which uh, I'm yet to review. I've got to work out what I'm going to do with it. So it's a, a NAS case for uh, Compute Module 4. So I've got to work out what I'm going to put on it. But uh, yeah, looking forward to that. So I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.